Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to show you how to make this crocheted dickey. We start at the top of the neck and we create the band that goes around the neck. So this is one piece that we start with. We do this ribbing section and it is worked back and forth all the way around until the measurement we need. And then we will uh, go a couple of rounds around that once we join it together and then work our way down the front of the, the piece. It is cabling and it, that essentially means in crochet that we are doing front post stitches and back post stitches. The back piece here is just to insert into your jacket to keep it in place. So this takes one skein of Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. Let's get started. Okay, so for this tutorial, you will need at least one skein of the Hobby Lobby I Love This Yarn. The yardage is different between the solids and the prints, stripes, um, all the others. The solids come in 355 yards. So I used one of these when I made mine. So you would be looking at at least one of these to make yours or more if you're going to do the cowl neck. The cowl neck will take more yardage. The one that I showed in the beginning of the video is a turtleneck version. So if you're going to use a printed version of the I Love This Yarn by Hobby Lobby, you would need two of these. If you are using a solid, you would need one if you are doing the turtleneck. You would need more than one if you're doing a cowl neck. These come, uh, the solids come in seven ounces. They are 199 grams, 355 yards. 325 meters. This is 100% acrylic and it is a medium worsted weight four. Calls for an eye hook. So I am using an eye hook 5.5 mm. I have it wrapped up. I did a short tutorial on how to do this on your own. So I use clover hooks and then uh, the tutorial that I posted was how to make it more ergonomic if you need to. Then we will need a uh, measuring tape so that you can make sure that your measurement around your neck is correct. Uh, something to cut your yarn with and then something to weave in your ends. So when beginning this dickey, you will need to decide how far you want it to go up on your neck. I chose the length that I chose because it will cover my mouth if I unfold the the neck portion. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the neck portion. This would go around your neck like a turtleneck. I chose to uh, do the length of mine based on if I unrolled this while wearing it, this would comfortably fit over my nose to keep me extra warm when I'm outside. This would tuck up by your ears, this would tuck up by your nose. So I did that because it's very windy in my area, typically in the winter time and fall and pretty much all the time. So uh, I chose to do mine this length. So let me measure for you. This is completed and we are looking at about, oh, seven and a half inches for the, the width of this. So when we're starting this piece, we will start and do a chain and then we will be working back and forth in rows for the first part of this. So this is all of our ribbing done back and forth. So to decide how long you want your neck to be, just just choose. I basically, <laughs> I basically took a length of yarn and then I measured against my neck area up towards my nose area so that I would have the length of yarn with me when I was chaining. So say you would just take a piece of yarn, measure from here to the bottom of your neck area by your collarbone, and then just keep that handy 
so that you can make sure your chain is that long. To start, we will start with a chain of however you desire that you want your length. I made mine seven and a half inches. I think that is a good start to a basic size. So just take, do a slip knot. I wrap it around my finger like this, and then I pull that through just like that. Let me get my notes on when I wrote the pattern so I know how many I chained. So I chained 25 as my foundation chain. Seventeen so far. Okay, so I have my twenty-five chains. Remember, this is the length from your bottom of your neck to your nose area that you will then fold over, and it will be on your neck. So, in the second chain from the hook. One, two, we will half double crochet. And we will half double crochet in each of the stitches all the way across. Okay, we have double crocheted in each stitch or chain across. Now we are going to chain one, which we are not going to count as a stitch. And we are going to turn. Now we are going to half double crochet in the back loop only. First stitch and all the way across. So let me show you what that looks like. So we would wrap our yarn over once, look at our work as we turn it towards us. This is the front loop and where my middle finger is here, that is the back loop. So we would be going in that loop. Half double crochet, we're gonna do that all the way across. This is the front, this is the back.
And here, you see, there's still a back loop at the beginning turn that we did with that chain two. So we're going to chain one, does not count as a stitch. And we are going to repeat that last row for as long as we want to make the neck portion of our dicky. So this is the general rule of thumb. If you want to create a turtleneck dicky, which would be a closer product to your neck, and you are an average size adult, you would go ahead and work this piece until it measures 16 inches long. If you want a cowl neck, which is a more loose fabric around your neck, you would work 19 inches. You would work this piece 19 inches long. So we're going to keep doing the same row over and over and over until we reach the turtleneck length, which would be 16 inches, or the cowl neck, which would be 19 inches. So you would measure this piece, keep going up and up and up and up until you have that measurement that you need. So each and every row for the neck piece is to chain one turn and do a half double crochet in the back loop only. And this is what creates that ribbing. Chain one, turn. Just going to do a half double crochet in each of the back loops, every row until your piece measures the measurement that you desire. I'm going to make mine until it is 16 inches long.
you will have 24 half double crochets in each row just so that you can keep track of how many you have and how many you should always have so that you're not getting off track. I will meet up with you when my piece measures 16 inches. All right, my piece is now measuring 16 inches and for the turtleneck version, that is where you would stop. If you are doing the cowl version, which would be more loose around your neck, you would continue and do to 19 inches. This creates room between your neck and the piece, which makes it a cowl neck. This one will be a turtleneck. So I'm going to go ahead and fold the piece in half now since I'm at 16 inches. And that is for a standard adult sized head for it to easily slide over. So I am going to put the two ends together and then I am going to slip stitch. Not in any special manner. When I am done, I am going to turn the piece inside out. So you can grab one loop on each side. You can grab both loops. It doesn't really matter. I prefer one loop just because it is less bulky. And since it will be turned the other way around, you will not see the slip stitching unless you like it and then leave it this way. So I'm going to continue that all the way down the edge and then I will meet up with you when we get to the end. Turning the piece from where we were to where I think it looks like it, it looks like the better side to me. So I turn it inside out. So continuing around the piece now that it is joined, we don't need to bind off or anything. You can ignore this strand of yarn. We'll chain one and put a single crochet in that same stitch. And in the next stitch and in the next stitch. Now by stitch I mean place where you can put your hook. They are not definitive stitches, they are the side of the work. So I put my hook in typically on these rows wherever my hook will easily go in and every third stitch I'm going to increase. So I will do single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, two single crochets all the way around the piece. So this next stitch would be two single crochets. And then I would proceed with doing single crochet, single crochet, single crochet. And again, putting my hook in wherever it feels comfortable. And every three single crochets, I am doing two single crochets in the next. So one, two, three, And then one, two. And this is to enlarge it, to lay around our neck area more comfortably. So if you are making the cowl version, make sure you're not increasing and just doing the single crochet all the way around the work. 
really doesn't matter what your stitch count is at the end of this at all. continue with this and I will meet up with you in a moment. Continuing on we will slip stitch to the first single crochet and chain one. Round two we are going to put a single crochet in that same stitch and a single crochet in every stitch all the way around. We are not increasing this round just one single crochet into every stitch and I will meet up with you in a moment. Continuing on after finishing that round two, we slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. Okay, so we're going to turn our work over now and look at the front of it. We need to mark out the front 30 stitches. So I'm going to count from the center here, 15 hopefully on one side and then on the other. I'm going to put a stitch marker there. And now I took my finger off the spot, so I'm going to count back. Okay, so we have 30 stitches centered on the front of our work. Now we are going to continue on in rows. We are going to cut our yarn from the back. These are from Hobby Lobby. They're like two bucks over in the sewing section. Okay. So now I'm going to reattach the yarn over here. I'm going to chain one. Okay, so we're going to start working in rows. So if I say rounds, I apologize, but I mean row if I do say rounds. So row one, we are going to single crochet in the same stitch as our chain one and then across to the other stitch marker. So in total, we will have 30 single crochets. So same stitch and then down. Lid off. So I'm just going to count from my end here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now for 30 stitches. So for row two, we are going to chain one and turn. That chain one does not count as a stitch. We are going to double crochet in the same 
stitch as our chain one and then across. So we will have 30 double crochets on row two. So we chain one, turn, and we're going to double crochet in the same stitch as that chain one. And then all the way down these 30 stitches. Okay, at the end of our row two, we are going to chain one and turn. Okay, so we are going to start our cabling. Follow along with me, you can do this. It is not difficult. You just need to know where you're putting your stitch. So if you've never done post stitches, it's not hard. Once you do a couple, you'll be a pro. It's not a big deal. As long as you believe you can do it, you can do it. Okay, so we have chained one, we turned. We're going to put a double crochet in the same stitch. And in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. The next three stitches are front post double crochets. So you wrap your yarn around once, go into your stitch around the post. So beginning over here, go through the behind part and then back up front. You're gonna wrap the yarn around and finish the double crochet just like you normally would. One front post double crochet. We need two more. Go in from the side, the right side to the left, in the back, and then around and through. Three front post double crochets. Next we are going to double crochet in the next four stitches. Now we're going to skip two stitches, one, two, and we are going to front post treble crochet in the next stitch. So skipping this stitch and this stitch to front post treble crochet, we wrap our yarn around twice. We go into the stitch just like we did the front post double Pull the yarn through and then finish the treble crochet as we normally would. I'm going to do that two more times. Two wraps.
Now we're going to go back to the stitches we skipped and the previous stitch before the ones we skipped. So we have our two skip stitches, one, two, and then we have this one that has a double crochet in the top. We are going to do a front post treble crochet in this stitch, the one that has the double crochet on the top of it, this stitch, and this stitch. So we're going to start with this one, then do this one, then do this one. Same way we did the first three right here. Make sure you're going into the one that has the double crochet on the top. two, pull through two. Still see those two we skipped. We're going to do the next one. And the next one. Okay. Now we're going to put a double crochet behind front post treble crochet. So you turn your work a little bit. You see that's the top of the stitch here. One double crochet goes in that and then a double crochet in the next three. And now we're going to do our three front post double crochets. And then if we did everything right, we should have a six double crochets left. Hooray. We're going to chain one just so you can look at the front here. Okay, so we started with double crochets over here, did three front posts, did our cabling in the middle, did our three front posts, and then finished off with double crochets. So every time you start a row, you're going to start with double crochets, then you will have the three posts, double crochets in between, and then your cabling. That will be the same every single time but we're not at a repeat yet so this was row three so now we are going to go on to row four so we have chained one and we're going to turn moving on to row four we have chained one and we have turned we are going to double crochet in that same stitch as the chain one and in the next five Now, since we did a front post on our row before, on row four, we do back posts so that the posts are going to stay on this side of the work. So to do a back post double crochet, we put the yarn around the hook. It's easier if you turn your work and look at it. I hold the yarn with my finger and you will insert your hook from right to left through and then finish your double crochet. So 
you've done your three back post double crochets. Now we're going to decrease a bit. We're going to put a double crochet in the next two. So double crochet, double crochet. And then over these two stitches, we are going to decrease. So we are going to double crochet two together. So we yarn over, put our hook in, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, go through two, go through all three. So we just decreased a stitch. Now we have our six cable stitches in the middle of the work. And for every even row for these um, six cabling stitches, we will do a back post double crochet always in those on our even rows. So we yarn over, we turn our work. See that first one here? So we're going to go in that one and do our back post double crochet. Yarn over. There's our next one. Yarn over. And there's our third. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Take a look at your work. These are the stitches you just created back post double crochets right there. They are attached to this. Your next three are right here. One, two, three. They're below those or behind. So you will yarn over and I, I just pull my work over and go through. You need to pull it around. That's perfectly fine. See, you have two more. Yarn over. Do that next back post double crochet yarn over, do that next back post double crochet. Now, since we decreased on this side with our stitches, we need to mimic that on the other side. So we will decrease the next two stitches with a double crochet two together. Yarn over, go in stitch, pull up loop, pull through two, yarn over, go in next stitch, pull up loop, pull through two, pull through all three decreased. Double crochet in the next two stitches. Now we have our back post stitches to do back here. So we have back post double crochet, back post double crochet, back post double crochet. And then we have six stitches on the end to do six double crochets. Chain one, turn. Take a look at the work. That is as hard as it gets. We will repeat row three and row four for the remainder of the front piece of our work. I will show you row three again. So we have chained one, we have turned our work, we will start with a double crochet in the same stitch, and in the next five stitches do a double crochet. One, two, Three, four, five. In the next three, we have a three front post double crochets. And then we will have four double crochets. Now we are going to skip these next two stitches and we are going to front post treble crochet in the next three stitches. Yarn over twice. Oh, 
looking back at her work, we have this one stitch that has a double crochet over the top. We are going to front post treble crochet, front post treble crochet, front post treble crochet in those three. Now we are going to put a double crochet behind this end front post treble crochet and in the next three stitches. Front post double crochet in the next three. and double crochet in the next six stitches. Chain one, turn. Moving on to an even row because we are on the back of our work. We are going to do six double crochets three back post double crochets, two double crochets, double crochet two together, six back post double crochets, double crochet two together, two double crochets, three back post double crochets, and six double crochets. Every even row will be the same exact. Every odd row at this point will be the same as the odd row. So we are repeating row three and row four until our piece measures the length that you want. I went to row 42 on my piece. So repeating row four, which this makes it our row six, and it's easy to count your rows. So you would start with your single crochet row once you finished your neck area, and that would be your one, two, three, four, five. So now we are heading into row six, which would be a repeat of row four. So any even numbered row you have, that's a repeat of row four. Any odd row you have at this point is a repeat of row three. So repeating row four, we are actually on row six. We will put a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain one. And in the next five. And we are going to do a back post double crochet in the next three. So yarn over, turn your work, looking at your work over here. Now remember we're decreasing because this is our even row and on our odd rows we add an extra stitch so we don't have a gap in our cable length. We have to decrease that stitch on our even rows so our project doesn't keep getting larger. So we will do double crochet, double crochet, and double crochet two together. Now we have six cable stitches and we are going to back post double crochet in all of those. Our next 
through here down here. Now we will double crochet two together. Then two double crochet. And then three back post double crochet. And then six double crochet. Okay, let's take a look at the work. Oh, this is what we have so far. So we have created our neck piece. We are starting to do our cabling section. And now we're going to repeat row three and row four until your piece measures as long as you want it to measure. I went through row 42. So I will meet up back with you when I have completed my row 42. Okay, so I'm at the end of my row 42. And I am going to chain one. And then I'm going to go up the edge of the work putting a single crochet wherever the hook goes in comfortably. I am not going to count the stitches. You can if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and put a single crochet wherever the hook goes in easily. If it doesn't go in one spot, I'm just going to skip over it a bit and go into the next one. I'm going to go up this entire side and I will meet you at the top next to the collar. So coming up to the uh, back of your work, it will continue on in single crochet. You just want to hit whatever stitches are left here on the side. And then go ahead and start going into the the stitches of the end of our collar work here. And we are going to continue all the way around the work and then we're going to go back down the other side of the work. When you reach a corner, you want to put three single crochets in the corner so that it stays a corner and lays nicely. And once you get around to the other end where we had started, let me go back to that. This is where we had started, or where I started, doesn't matter what corner you start on. Once you get back to it, make sure that you put two more single crochets in that first corner there. Um, since we did not start out with three in the corner, because we are going around the edge. So I will meet back up with you once I get my single crochets all the way around the work, and then we will add on the back piece. And we are almost finished. All right, I am to my other corner here. I put two single crochets in the corner. And now I'm just going to slip stitch into the next stitch and cut off the end. Okay. So we are going back up to the back of our piece, back of our work. We are going to make a small back piece here to tuck in to your jacket to keep the piece um, staying put in your coat. So just like the front of the work, we are going to count out 30 stitches on the back of our work. And this does not have to be exact. We just want it sort of centered on the back of our body so that it could be tucked into the back and the front will be in the front. So I'm going to start in the middle here 
and count 15 stitches. Where's my little stitch marker? I'm gonna mark where my finger is because last time I did not do that. I did not count that one. And my other stitch marker I'm going to put here and close it because last time it slipped off. So we have 15, and now we're going to count the other way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's put our stitch marker in there. Now we are going to attach our yarn. Chain one with both of those to secure it. Now we're going to double crochet in the same space as our chain one here. And then we are going to double crochet in each of the stitches all the way over to our other stitch marker. All right, I am at the end of this row, putting a double crochet in my last stitch here where my stitch marker was at. And now I am going to chain one, turn my work, and I am going to double crochet all the way over, including this first stitch with the chain one in it. And I'm going to repeat that until my piece is measuring roughly two inches. Just enough to tuck into your jacket to keep the piece staying put as you wear it. So I'm going to go ahead and work mine until it's about two inches. You can make it as long as you want. Just be aware that I designed this to be about two inches and if you are making it larger you will be using more yarn so if you were counting on just using one skein of i love this yarn by hobby lobby if you make this back piece larger you may run out of yarn just so you're aware all right so i will meet up with you when my piece on the back measures two inches long Okay, as you can see, my piece is approximately two inches. Now this next step is completely optional. I'm going to cut my yarn there and pull it through. Uh, next two steps are completely optional, actually. So on my first piece, I thought it would look better if the back was done in a single crochet, just to finish up each edge, because this... This part looks just fine to me. And if you're not too particular about this, you do not have to single crochet along here. I just took some yarn. I attached it here at the corner and I did a single crochet into every space my hook comfortably fit, just like we did the side of our work earlier. And then I went along the, the back of the back of the back the edge of the back and then I went up the other side as well just to finish it off in the corner you want to put three stitches so three single crochets and then you would follow along the edge here the bottom edge and do a single crochet in each of those
Reaching this corner, I'm going to put three single crochets in the corner. To turn that corner, make it lay nice. And then continue on doing single crochet in the stitches of the small side area. Wherever your hook fits in comfortably. Slip stitch to the end there. Okay, so the second option you could do, and this is definitely not required in any way, shape, or form. On my original piece, I went along this edge with a single crochet as well. So just like the sides of the work, it will be wherever your hook comfortably fits in. Let me grab my other work here. This is how much yarn I have left at this point. So this back one has a single crochet around the edge. This front one does not. There is not a huge difference there. There's really not. It's a personal preference. You do not have to do the single crochet around the edge. If this does not bug you, leave it alone. I just thought it looked a little more finished with the single crochet around the top edge here. I'm going to turn my work so that it's the back is facing me. So this would be the back of your neck area. And I am just going to attach the yarn. Chain one with both strands to secure it. And then just a uh, single crochet in every space that is comfortable. Try not to crochet too tightly because you do not want to have a problem getting the piece over your head. Remember we ribbed this first section here so that it would go nicely over our heads. So we just want to make sure that we're not doing it too tight so we have an issue there. So just loosely crochet one single crochet in each spot that your hook goes in easily. And I will meet up with you when that is completed. We are back at the beginning of the work where we started and I am going to slip stitch into that first single crochet and cut my yarn. So now our piece is completed. If you want to stretch this out so that it lays more flat, you can pin it on a towel, get it a little damp, pin it on a towel, and then just pin it out flat like you would want to block it. You would just lay it, pin it where you want to pin it, and then let it dry, typically overnight, depending on the... Uh, depending on the humidity in your area. So the end is a bit wavy, which I actually enjoy. Uh, if you do not enjoy that, again, you can pin it out. Get it all set straight if you want it straight. So I will be coming out with another tutorial with another dicky, crochet dicky, and it will be different than this one. This one I wanted to do immediately because I love cabling. So I wanted to get some cabling work done and I did. So this neck piece here can be added to many garments if you want a rib neck piece on them, such as a poncho, you could add, add a, a rib neck to that to make it a little warmer. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I will be coming out with more. This is just my first one I had done. If you need a little more uh, sizing on each side, you can always add more stitches. You could start from the back here, go all the way around the piece, all the way around. 
and just add more side if you would like to. But I think the this this piece is good for any size person. That would definitely fill up the inside of a jacket or coat that you're wearing. Right now it's measuring 10 inches. So if you were using a bulky weight yarn, this would obviously be a little, a little bit wider because bulky yarn is bigger. And if you did the, uh, the neck piece with a bulky yarn, you go by measurement. You, you don't go by rows, you go by measurement. So you can use any size yarn you want on this project. So let me pull in my other piece that is all finished up and weaved in. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed making your crochet dicky. Um, there will be more to come very, very soon. I have two more patterns that I have planned for crochet dickies. So leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And until next time, guys, I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.